He has hosted the NBA All-Star Game. That first one was back in 1985 at the Hoosier Dome. Fox 59's Chris Widlick looks back on the association's first visit to the Circle City. As Indianapolis gets ready to host the NBA All-Star Game for the second time, Pacers Sports and Entertainment CEO Rick Fusen remembers the first one. Urban Mel Simon hired him as director of special events to help plan the 1985 game. Well, we were growing. We were headed up the hill in terms of uh, growing as a city. Um, a lot of people over the years have called Indianapolis a, a cornfield with a racetrack around it. And I think that was an opportunity for us to start proving that we're not. All-Star Weekend was just two events back then. The game at the Hoosier Dome on Sunday and All-Star Saturday night at Market Square Arena. Here it goes, beautiful pass, Brown scores. Which featured some local stars. Pacers ABA champions Roger Brown and Mel Daniels and Indy's own Oscar Robertson and Dick and Tom Van Arsdale played in the Legends Contest. Five. Pacers rookie Terrence Stansbury battled the highest flyers of that generation, Dr. J, Dominique Wilkins, and Michael Jordan in the dunk contest. Stansbury received the only perfect score of the first round with his 360 Statue of Liberty dunk and finished third behind Wilkins and Jordan. At this time, the Pacers were, they were last place team. So to have a Pacer be part of this NBA weekend was pretty exciting for the fans at that time. For him to be able to go in that dunk contest and do so well uh, was, hey, we can compete against anybody, including the big boys. With Saturday a smashing success, attention turned towards the actual game. But the weather threw everyone a curveball. It snowed about six inches overnight from Saturday to Sunday. Biggest crowd ever in the NBA All-Star history, and it snowed. That was a memory. It was also scary. But guess what? The city got it done. We got it done as a partnership. And all those 40,000 people came, and we had one of the greatest All-Star games ever. The game's MVP, Ralph Sampson, led the West to victory. Former Indiana Hoosier Isaiah Thomas led the East with 22 points, while French Lick and Indiana State's Larry Bird chipped in 21. A lot of Indiana influence despite the fact there were no Pacers, and the fans loved that. The All-Star Game really made a statement about Indianapolis as a major league city, as an NBA city, and I think it uh, kind of sold the fans on the NBA as well. Uh, the Pacers, they weren't drawing well. But uh, to have all these great players come into Indianapolis and play that game at the Dome kind of really solidified Indianapolis as an NBA city. The 2024 game will bring Fusen full circle. He's retiring after the season the way he started. You can't ask for something like that, to be in the same place, working for the same franchise for 40 years, and to be able to start with an All-Star game and to end with an All-Star game. It fills my heart. Counting down to NBA All-Star Weekend, Chris Whitley, Fox 59 Sports.